this is an American elm. This is a slippery elm. Okay, so here's a slippery elm. I'm at the University of Houston Clear Lake campus, which this place is amazingly beautiful. Talk about going to college in the woods. So it looks an awful lot like an American elm, almost Americana, but the primary difference is that the leaves generally tend to be bigger and they're definitely sandpapery. Welcome tree people. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Gene. If this is your first time here and you want to be better at making trees happy, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So that rough sandpapery leaf is kind of a giveaway. Now, I first saw it, I first saw this one right here, right? Walking down this sidewalk and it's overhanging and uh, getting kind of close to that building. And I'm like, those are some pretty big leaves. Uh, around the corner off that way, at the far other end of that this building, there's an American elm. Now, I recognize that shaded interior foliage tends to be bigger overall than the full sun upper leaves and epicormic sprouts and trunk sprouts tend to produce bigger leaves but nevertheless this is indeed a considerably bigger leaf particularly compared to the american elms that grow nearby right here on campus just by way of comparison look at the size of this leaf this is a big leaf see that it is longer and wider than a Federal Reserve note. It's a big leaf. So the sandpapery bark is a giveaway. Now, if, if you want to use slippery elm, if you want to harvest slippery elm for your own purposes, well, I'm not really sure that I recommend that when you can get slippery elm on Amazon so cheaply. It's just, I'm not sure it's a good idea unless you really know how to harvest sustainably. We could clip off a little piece here. This tree's going to be pruned anyway. Now, I would ordinarily never just remove trunk sprouts because they're unsightly. I'm removing this sprout for the sole purpose of peeling away the bark. Let's take a look at this real quick. And it is super slippery. Now I'm sure if you did the same thing with the American Elm it'd be slippery, but this is gooey and gummy and slippery. So you can peel off these little strips. And you know, if you're already pruning, oh boy, that's super slippery, right? Super slippery. So, you know, if we're already pruning this tree, now removing epicormic sprouts from the trunk is not our objective. Providing clearance to the structure is reducing the dead branches, are removing the dead branches and reducing the weight the wind load and the leverage, especially since it leans away from the wooded area and towards the building and directly over this walkway, that's really our objective. You know, reducing the risk of damage or injury because of a falling tree or a falling tree part. But you can harvest this. There's a lot of people with different sets of instructions on Google, on YouTube. You know, I don't believe in harvesting it from the main trunk people say do it in late winter people say do it in the fall right now it's mid spring uh, it's a good time to do it and then you know what you do with it whether you make a tea or a tincture or whether you dry it and grind it into a powder that's up to you but it's super simple and this is not an endangered tree but I wouldn't go cutting them down just to harvest. I've read where certain herbalists get all they need for a whole year for themselves and their patients just by 
using a hand pruner and going once a year their whole year's supply so those big those big leaves right see that silhouetted against the against the building and against the sky that's what tipped me off slippery elm wonderful tree thanks for tuning in okay so here you can see the size difference now again this is not super reliable I see American elms with much bigger leaves than these right here but this is an American elm this is a slippery elm so don't rely on leaf size but this is indeed rough sandpapery and this is smooth okay this is smooth American elm this is sandpapery slippery elm 